What's up guys, Hansi here and I am super excited about today's project. If you remember about two years ago I posted a project called the Music Reactive Desk Lamp. And today we will be revisiting that project. So let me tell you what I have in mind. Okay, here's the plan. Imagine a room, for instance the living room, with a tall floor lamp standing in each corner. The center of the room has your regular seating area, with some speakers next to the television in one side of the room. The sound emits from the speaker and enters a portable microphone that can be placed on a table or moved anywhere near a sound source. The microphone transmits the sound signals to the lamps wirelessly, which in turn makes the lights on the lamp react to the sound and illuminate the entire space. That's the plan. To create the lamp I have four of these aluminium channels. We are going to place the LED strip in the middle of the channel, but to diffuse the light we'll have to use some acrylic glass. We have to go cut smaller strip of the acrylic to fit on top of the channels. As the acrylic glass is super clear and transparent and I want the lights from the LEDs to be more diffused and even, I have to sand the glass for a while. Also this fixes the rough edges that the table saw creates. I started with a low grit of around 80 and moved my way up all the way to 600 grit. I did this for 4 different strips of acrylic so that I can make 4 different lamps. Now we can move on to the LED strips. In this project I will be using quite a few components. I will put a link for all of them in the description box of this video. This is an individual addressable RGB strip with 144 LEDs per meter. If you're unfamiliar with individual addressable RGBs, all it basically means is that each individual LED can have a different color than its neighbor. And that's quite handy for cool light effects. With the adhesive that comes on the back of the strips, and some extra hot glue for a good measure, I can secure the LED strips to the bottom of the aluminium channels. I'm also cutting off the cables on one side. Now that the LEDs are in place, I'm going to use quick drying epoxy glue to secure the acrylic to the top of the aluminium. I apply the glue on the top of the edges and hold the acrylic stable for a couple of minutes. And this was a bit hard to do on my own, so Martina helped me out. Thanks Martina! As a housing for the electronics and as a nice base for the lamp, I'm going to use this slab of oak. As you can see it's quite thin, but we'll cut smaller strips, glue them together and hopefully we'll get a nice and sturdy block. I tested different sizes and decided I was going for 10 by 10 centimeter large blocks, or about 4 by 4 inches. I lost the footage of cutting the strips, but I adjusted the table saw to the right thickness, and then I used the miter saw with a jerry-rigged stop block to cut the lengths. And I need quite a few of these, the block will have 5 stacked on top of each other, and since I'm making 4 blocks, I have to cut 20 pieces of oak. If you'd attempt anything like this on your own, don't forget your respirator. I glued together blocks with 3 pieces and blocks with 2 pieces. The block with 2 pieces will be on the bottom and will be hollow in the middle to give room for the electronics, while the top 3 layers will have a hole that fits the aluminium channel so it can slide into position. Now I mark the center on the block and draw the outline of the aluminium channel on the wood to serve as a guide for where to cut. 
I'm using the drill press with a Forstner bit to carve out most of the wood and then a wooden chisel along with some patience to get the cut right. I made sure the LED bar fit into the socket in the wood and I'm moving on to the bottom part. This part needs to be entirely hollow as to make room for the electronics. By drilling holes in each corner I made room for the blade of my jigsaw so I could cut out a large hole. Using a generous amount of wood glue between the pieces, I put one of the hollow blocks on the bottom of the block with the LED bar socket. With a large amount of clamps pressing the pieces firmly together. I can't say it looks gorgeous at this point, but let's wait until the glue is dry and we will see how it looks after I have run it through the belt sander. The woodworking for the lamp bases is complete. I'm applying a little bit of oil finish on top of that sanded oak, which I personally think turned out pretty clean. Now let's move on to the fun stuff. As I said before, I want the lamp to be wirelessly controlled by a microphone centerpiece that can be moved around independently. Hence, these lamps need to be able to pass some messages. I'm using the Wemos D1 mini Wi-Fi board for this because of its convenient small size. I will add a schematic for the soldering in the description, but here's the quick rundown. I have an LED connector that can connect to the LED strip inside the aluminium channel. I solder the positive and negative wire of these to their own solder pad on the side of the perf board, where I will later connect a power source. Next I connect the green data wire to the pin where the D2 connector of the Wi-Fi board is placed. I solder a path for the positive and negative from the big solder pads on the perf boards to the 5V pin and ground pin on the Wemos, so that the board is powered. Lastly, I solder a connector to the solder pad that will later be used to power the entire thing. To provide enough power for the LED strips, I'm using a 40 watt 5 volt power supply. I have matching plugs which the power supply can connect to, and I solder these to the other half of the connector that will connect the electronics to the power plug. To finish it up, I drill a hole on the back side of each wood block with a slightly smaller drill bit than the size of the power plugs. Then I use a mallet to gently tap them in place. A generous amount of epoxy glue around the edges of the channel will secure the LED bar in its socket. The only remaining part is to cut the perf board to size and connect and fasten the remaining cables. I'm making sure to mount it with a USB port down, so it will be quite easy to program it later. Off camera I discovered that one of the LED strips was malfunctioning, so I ended up with three working lamps. The setup can always be extended with more lamps later. Most of the work is now done, but I also have to make the microphone module, so let's do a quick rundown of the components. A battery cell to provide a completely wireless experience, a battery holder to hold the battery, a power switch to cut off all power, a Node MCU Wi-Fi module, since I ran out of the Wemos, it serves the same purpose, a microphone module to provide the lamps with audio data, a charge controller to charge and discharge the battery safely, a push button to change the lamp mode of operation, and a LED diode and a Game Boy button to be the status light and the top of the push button. Using the same method as before, I made a wooden block. 
it needs to have a slot for the microphone module and the button with the LED in it. I also want to make a slot for the charging module so this thing can be plugged in and out of a regular phone charger. Here is the power circuit connected to the Wi-Fi board and as mentioned find the schematic in the description of the video if you are interested in seeing the details. The push button is connected to the Wi-Fi board with a 10k pull-up resistor to detect the button presses. So I'm almost done, all I have to do is to upload the code for the controller and for the lamps. Luckily I have already written the code so you don't have to watch that. But if you're interested in that sort of thing I will leave a link in the description so you can check it out there. Now I'm sure the big question all of you have is how does this all work? And it's actually quite simple to explain. When I power on this controller like this... It creates a wireless network, much like the Wi-Fi network that's in your home, which all of the lamps will attempt to connect. 
When it detects that all the lamps are connected, it will start sending out data. The data it sends out depends on the mode that it's in, and if it's in the sound reactive mode, then it will send sound data from the microphone to the lamps, and the lamps will show different colors. If I press the button, I will change the modes of the lamps, and the lamps will behave differently, like having a static color or fading between some different colors. And while we are on the subject of Wi-Fi, it is a good point to talk about today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. If you're worried about the security of the Wi-Fi you're visiting, especially the public ones like in a cafe or in an airport, then a VPN service is really great to have. All I do to use ExpressVPN is to open the app on my phone, select the location I want to connect from, and then all my data is encrypted and secure. I used to want a VPN service, but I always thought it would be super slow. It turns out ExpressVPN is one of the fastest providers out there and there's hardly any difference at all. If you really want the maximum ease and security, ExpressVPN also has an app for your router so that all the traffic going through your Wi-Fi will automatically be encrypted through the VPN service. And this is also really great if you want to access location-based content. It is less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get 3 months for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash nerdforge or click the link in the description. That's expressvpn.com slash nerdforge for 3 months for free with a 1-year package. expressvpn.com slash nerdforge to learn more. Take back your privacy today. Thanks ExpressVPN and thank you for listening and considering checking them out. As you know, it helps us keeping this channel up and running. Now let us look at the results of the project. 